Hello everybody and welcome back to the Tune Review YouTube channel. My name is Paul. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Uh, as usual, if you do enjoy today's show, please hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, please do come and subscribe to this fantastic community right here on the Tune Review. Uh, right, what I wanted to talk about today was, uh, is it basically time for us as Newcastle United fans uh, to maybe lay off Eddie and give him a bit of space? Um, the reason I'm asking that is because, uh, you know, we always seem to doubt him as fans and me included. I'm including myself in this, by the way, because I have been critical of Eddie Howe over the last few weeks during the course of this uh, early part of the season. But given the results that we've had, we're only four points, four points off the top three. Well, off third place anyway. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, should we be putting more trust in Eddie Howe instead of questioning him week to week? Because we all do it. We all do it as fans. If we lose a game, you know, all hell breaks loose, you know, with this, with that, or the manager can't do it. He can't take us to the next level. He's not the elite manager that we want. Um, and I'm kind of thought over the weekend and... It's been on my mind for quite a while now to maybe do a video like this and say, you know, should we just take a step back as fans and just concentrate on what the manager's doing and put our faith in him? Because I've written a few things down and I want to go through them as to why I think Eddie Howe deserves a lot more praise than what uh, I've given him or a lot of fans have given him. And maybe stop saying, oh, Eddie Howe out or questioning his capabilities as manager moving forward because we've got the transfer window coming up but he's also got a really good bunch of players there and the football that we play is better than I've seen in a long time and I'll go into that in a bit more detail in in the video um, but I want to start with um, you know the way he surprises us okay because let's be honest we all saw that team sheet at lunchtime on Saturday and thought my God, what is he doing? What is this man doing? You know, there's players who have gone out there and performed brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly in the Carabao Cup and have been demoted back to the bench. Tenali's not even starting the game. So, you know, questions were asked already. And I saw in our match day live chat, lots of people saying, this is a disgrace. Eddie Howe out, left, right and centre. All Loads of comments. And yet again, the team goes out and puts on a performance like that and the players who we didn't think were good enough to come in had standout games. So again, Eddie Howe proves to me and proves to you guys, hopefully, that you know he does know what he's doing. Sometimes Eddie will make mistakes. All right, absolutely no doubt about it. But which manager doesn't make mistakes, guys? Who can you look at and say, well, they haven't made a mistake? You know, Man City lost at Bournemouth at the weekend, and, and Guardiola says, I made a mistake. You know, he was man enough to come out and say he made a mistake. And Eddie's done that from time to time, thinking, you know, I shouldn't have played this guy or I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that. Managers, I think being a football manager, guys, is, is a constant learning process and that you're going to make mistakes and it's how you react to those mistakes. Now, one criticism I've always had of Eddie is sometimes I think it takes him too long to learn from the mistakes. But that's something he can work on as a person, and I'm sure he's aware that maybe there is faults in his in his uh, ammunition, and he will put that right over time. But given where he's got the club, and and this is what I you know I, I've said before, don't look back. You know it's where we are now. Okay, it's all right saying yeah, Eddie saved us from relegation, got us into the Champions League. We had a wonderful season then, um, but you know this season hasn't been great. But on the flip side of that, you know, what I will say is we're four points from third. And yes, we've had a few below par performances early doors this season. But I think that had a lot to do with what went on in the summer. And again, I'll, I'll come on to that. But the development of players is something that Eddie Howe has been really good at. And Lewis Hall is probably going to be the standout one. And the reason I'm bringing up Lewis Hall is because Eddie took a lot of flack from us last season by keeping Lewis Hall on the bench or not giving him as many games as we thought he maybe deserved. But again, it's a process for Eddie in getting Lewis Hall ready for what he had plans for this season. He didn't feel that Lewis Hall was fit enough. He thought he was still, you know, very, very raw as a player. Now, he still is raw, but he's very young. But he's not as raw as he was last season when he first came into the club. And I think it, it you know, prayers and hats off to Eddie Howe for what he's done with Lewis Hall. Because we all questioned him. And again, 
in my opinion, he has been proved right with what he did with Lewis Hall. Emil Kraft is another one. We thought he was absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. And a, a waste of a signing. But he's turned into a fan favourite now. Because Eddie Howe has changed little kinks in his game and put him on the right path to being a very, very good player and a very versatile player. You know, nobody could tell me that when Emil Kraft first started at right back that we ever thought that he was going to play and play well at centre back when he was needed, but he did. And these are the kind of things that I think everybody, including me, has forgotten about really over time. Just because we've had a few dodgy performances, I think that's taken away from what this manager can actually do. And look, I know that this video isn't going to convince any everybody that Eddie Howe is the right man. People have already made their decision on that. But I'm doing this video to just highlight the plus points of the manager we have. And maybe, you know, the grass isn't greener somewhere else. You look at West Ham United. They wanted Moyes to go. He went at the end of the season. They brought this new guy in. And now some of them are calling for Moyes to come back. Because West Ham can't get a game together. So it's very important that you, you, you're careful what you wish for in life, especially when it comes to a football manager, because you just don't know what's around the corner. And the way Eddie Howe conducts himself, the way he works, we've got a manager who is 100% committed to Newcastle United and winning something with us. He wants to win. And I think that's a, a big factor with Eddie Howe. You know, when people say, oh, you know, we, we've, we've lost this, we've lost that, we haven't played very well. It will hurt Eddie Howe just as much as it hurts us as fans. Um... Now, last season, we go back to last season and we think, well, you know, it was an on and off season and injuries absolutely crippled us, absolutely crippled us. And, you know, that is fact. You can look back and see the injuries that we had and Eddie didn't have a very big squad to choose from. Um, criticism from me was that maybe he didn't bring the kids in when he should have. But who am I to know? Those kids may not have been good enough. I don't know. But that, that's just something as a fan you talk about and you think, well, could he have done this? Could he have done that? And that would be very unfair, I guess, of us to say that, given the problems that Eddie Howe had. But he still managed to finish in the top half of the Premier League and almost got us back into Europe. You know, if it wasn't for Man United winning the FA Cup, we would have been back in Europe. And every, everybody would have been thinking, wow, despite the problems that Eddie's had this season, look at where he's got us. He's got us back into Europe. But that wasn't to happen because of what happened to Man United. Now, over this summer, we've had, you know, problems with PSR. We've had to sort of, I guess, put players' names around the league that they may be available for us to make sure that we um, we hit the PSR requirements. Now, did Anthony Gordon take exception to that? Or was it more to so that what happened with England and the fact that he wasn't used and he was, he was criticised at times? Um, maybe that got into his head. But whatever it is now, he's now signed a new contract and he's he's very, very happy to play for the manager. And again, I think that's something that needs looking at, the fact that a player of Anthony Gordon's calibre wants to stay at Newcastle United for years to come, wants to work with Eddie Howe and wants to win things. Um, and, and again, you look at players who maybe... Eddie Howe's been accused of maybe not being able to bring in the big name players because he's not at that elite level. But I kind of disagree with that as well. He's brought Tonali in. He's brought Bruno in. Botman, Isak. All these quality footballers have signed for Newcastle United when Eddie Howe is the manager. Now, if they weren't, you know, convinced by what Eddie Howe was as a manager, they wouldn't have signed for the football club. And yes, I have been very critical of Eddie Howe, but I'm coming out today doing a video to say, you know, maybe we need to lay off this guy. Because he's doing a fantastic job all in. He is doing a great job. And again, I'll say it, not many, well, there will be people who disagree with me on this. And, you know, fair enough, put that in the comments below. But make it constructive. You know, don't just have a go at me for saying, oh, you know, why you, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you saying this about Eddie Howe? Put in the comments why you don't believe that Eddie Howe is the right man. Because I've said all along that I never wanted Eddie Howe sacked. I've criticised him. But I have never, never said I want him fired. I've been on the fence a couple of times and thinking, wow, is this going the right way? But when I've actually had to sit down and thought about things, I'm thinking to myself, no, I don't want Eddie Howe fired. I love the guy. I think he's the right guy for us. And I think he can, I think he can genuinely win a trophy with Newcastle United. And he, if he does, he then becomes a legendary status at Newcastle United. 
So, you know, players were disgruntled, so we've, we've been through that. Now, the type of football that Eddie Howe plays, and as much as Rafa Benitez was loved at the football club, the football wasn't great, guys. It wasn't free-flowing football. It wasn't attacking football. And it, it's, Rafa was very much on the defensive side of things. And you could look back at what players he had available and think, yeah, maybe that was that was because of uh, the, the the sort of the staff he had available. He, he didn't have the free-flowing football players that we now have at the football club. But Eddie Howe plays the right way for me. It's, it's exciting football. Eddie doesn't um, or hasn't been in the past put sides out that are going to just play for a draw. People may think that he's, he's parked the bus at times, but one thing about Eddie is he wants to win every football game. That isn't going to happen. That's just football. You don't win every game. You will lose some and you will draw some. But on the on the, on the the whole of it, I think, you know, the football that we've played under Eddie Howe has been superb. The intensity, the press, yes, it's been missing a bit this season, but it's starting to come back and you can see that with the players that he's putting out on the pitch who are capable of doing that. And I just think the football has been brilliant. We've been poor at times, but every team suffers a little bit in form. Now, the, the main question that I want to bring up here is, a lot of fans are questioning if Eddie Howe is an elite manager. Can he compete with the best? Now, what I will say is, I guess time will tell on that one. You know, let's get see what happens in the, the, the January window. Let's see what happens moving on. But also... The fact that, you know, you look back to the Champions League campaign, we should have qualified from that group. If it wasn't for a terrible penalty decision in Paris, we would have qualified. And he would have got into the next round of the Champions League. And I bet you'd bottom dollar everybody would have been praising Eddie Howe to the hilt, calling him a genius had that happened. But it was a very dodgy penalty that knocked us out of the Champions League. And I think people easily forget that as well. You know, we absolutely slaughtered Paris Saint-Germain at home. Eddie Howe... It was a tactical masterpiece how we played against against them. And we've seen it time and time and time again with Eddie Howe. That, it, you know, he works on his tactics. And, yep, doesn't get it right all the time. Absolutely. But most of the time since he's been here, he has got it right. And I guess what I'm saying is, guys, I think, you know, we should at least just maybe just lay off him a little bit now. Give him our full backing till at least the end of the season. Let's see where we end up at the end of the season. Because I think over the last, certainly the Chelsea home game and the Arsenal home game have proved to me that maybe we just need to just take a step back, concentrate on the team and stop maybe questioning Eddie's job week to week. And that's coming from me who's been guilty of it as well. I've just had a good think about it, put some points together and thought, yeah, you know what it is? I'm willing to give Eddie Howe the benefit of the doubt. I'm willing to get right behind him and support my manager and support my football club and see where we can finish. Because I genuinely believe, I still believe that Eddie Howe is the man to take us forward. I've never shifted on that despite my criticism of him. I think he can do things differently or do things better, but that's just a fan pr perspective. What he is doing is doing what he believes is right. He put that team out on Saturday because he believed that that team was right to get a result against Arsenal and he was proved right yet again. And eight out of ten times, Eddie Howe has been always proved right despite us questioning his decisions. Now, his in-game management is also something that's come up. Yes, I, I think he could be better in in-game management. But, guys, I think we're forgetting that maybe, you know, Eddie Howe goes home after some of these games and thinks, I should have done that better. I should have made a decision there. He will be just as hard on himself as anybody when the results don't go our way. So, you know, leave a comment below. Let me know where you are, where, where you're sitting with Eddie. But I think, you know, from, from me, from my point of view, I'm certainly willing to give him till the end of the season and give him my full backing and support. Even in even in defeats, I think it's very important that we stay together and we believe in this manager where he's taken us because I think we've been terribly harsh on him saying we want him out after, you know, looking back. And yes, history is gone, but at the same time, you know, he's continuing, he's building something. And, and to build something, you always hit little speed ramps in the road. You don't just build an empire and all of a sudden everything goes well throughout that process. There's always going to be little dips. And the start of this season has been a little dip, but look at what we, look at the last couple of performances. The players are getting their engines back. The players are getting the hunger. That you know, It's all coming together again. 
And that's why I believe that if we all get behind the manager and the players, I think we'll be okay this season. I really do. And I'm not going to sway on that. I'll take a, you know, we can look at things again in the summer and say, right, should we have done better here or there? But let's see where we finish. And let's see what Eddie does. Because I think he knows a lot better than we do, given that, you know, he was under massive pressure to get results out of the home game against Chelsea in the Arsenal game. And he's gone and done it. It's another test coming up at our, um, Nottingham Forest on Sunday. But hey, he always comes through these tests when he's really under pressure. But let me know. Um, one other thing I want to bring up, by the way, is the, uh, the our old mates at the Chronicle. And I, I don't know how long, you know, or where the Chronicle is anymore, but it's just not a Northeast paper anymore. Um, I'll put this uh, little tweet up on the, or well, it's on X. Um what they put after the game. Um, and it basically says, Alexander Isak passes Arsenal audition. Uh, national media spot Newcastle fear as rare goal wows. I mean, what, what sort of message is that? And, and this is the Chronicle, who was supposed to be a, no, a Newcastle newspaper, uh, have a, you know, a, a fantastic history with the football club. But, of course, they're not owned by the same people anymore, and it's very much just a, a, a media um, bandwagon now, all owned by the same uh, media companies. And, again, just, just ridiculous statements from the Chronicle. I mean, it passes Arsenal audition. Who said it was an audition? Alexander Isak is not auditioning to be signed by Arsenal. He is contracted to Newcastle United for quite a few years yet. So it would be up to us if we wanted to sell him. It's not Isak auditioning for Arsenal. Don't be so bloody stupid. Honestly, get lost. Go and, sub go and, go and do something. I am sick to death of the media putting up ridiculous statements like this. Absolutely shocking. But listen... It happens every single friggin' day. Every day, there is some media outlet trying to cause issues within the Newcastle United camp. I mean, putting that he's auditioning for Arsenal. Give yourselves a break, man. For God's sake. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you're new to the channel, uh, please come and subscribe. A wonderful community that we have here. But make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload or a uh, future video. And of course... Um, we are proudly, very proudly sponsored, as you can see, by Mamaru Records. Uh, they are based in Whitley Bay, uh, right in the centre, just opposite Greg's. Uh, I'll put the uh, their website link at the top of the description. Go and have a look if you're into, into your vinyl or merchandise, music, T-shirts, all sorts of stuff. Uh, please go and check Mamaru Records out. Check them online. And if you're in the Whitley Bay area, go and have a look. Uh, Steve's a great guy. And... Um, I'm sure he'll be able to do you a few deals. He's got some wonderful deals coming up uh, for Toon Review members and, of course, subscribers. So please uh, go and pay Steve a visit at Mama Roo Records, who proudly now sponsor the Toon Review YouTube channel. Uh, but thank you very much for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Monday, and we will see you very soon. Take care.